everyone and welcome to the breakdown today I'm gonna be teaching you how to start a bucket server in Minecraft 1.12.2 But before we jump into this video, I want to remind you that this is not a 24-hour server It uses your own computer's resources and it uses your own IP address and network connection Thus you do not want to give this server out to everyone publicly You don't want to make it public the most you want to do is give it to your friends and family that you trust because if this IP address gets in the wrong person's hands. They can DDoS your network, find out the general location of where you live, all sorts of stuff. So be careful. Now, what if you want all those things? What if you want your server to be up all the time? What if you want to be able to give it out to anybody? Maybe even make some money off of it with Bycraft. What do you do? Well, you can go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash MC server to get an awesome bucket server for just $7 a month. Y you won't find a better deal out there. The breakdown.xyz slash MC server, you will not regret it. There, you'll be able to get a bucket server up and running quickly and easily, get plugins on it extremely easily, all of that stuff. Not to mention, it's not going to be using your own computer's resources. It's not going to be able to be DDoS because it's got DDoS protection and it'll be up all the time again that's the breakdown.xyz slash mc server first link down below but how do we start a bucket server if we do just want to play with our families and friends and use our computers resources well the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below the breakdown.xyz slash bucket to go here where you can scroll down until you see the yellow download bucket button Click on that. That takes us off to getbucket.org where we want to find the version of bucket we would like. In this case, 1.12.2. Click on download here. Takes us on to the actual download page where you want to click on this right under you're about to download. It's going to say craft bucket dash whatever version. In this case, 1.12.2. You want to click on that and it will download bucket. You're going to want to save this file. I promise it's safe. It's been downloaded by millions of people right there. Want to keep that. And now we can minimize our browser to find bucket. If it's not on your desktop like mine is, you can hit the Windows key on your keyboard and R at the exact same time. Type in downloads, hit enter, and it will most likely be here in your downloads folder. If it is, just drag and drop it to your desktop. Once it's on your desktop, we want to right click and create a new folder. Title it bucket server. Exactly like that or different. Doesn't really matter what you call this. Just something you can identify it. And then take this bucket file we downloaded and drag it into the newly created folder. Then we want to just uh, double click on it. Just double click on it. Easy as that. It's then going to run some stuff, do some things, and load up the Minecraft EULA. That actually took about a minute for this to work on my computer. I thought it wasn't doing anything. I was like, what's going on? And then boom, it happened. So I would say wait five minutes after you double click on this for the documents to load and stuff. Once it's loaded, we want to double click on EULA here and open it in Notepad. And then we want to go to this address, right? The Minecraft EULA. Make sure we agree to it and that this server isn't going to be breaking any of the rules there. This one isn't. So I can go EULA equals false to EULA equals T-R-U-E. True exactly like this, right? Then click file, save, close out of this document, and double click on craft bucket again. It's now going to download even more files and get basically everything you need generally for the server to work. Wouldn't surprise me if this takes a while as well because it took a considerable amount of time to get uh, the, right, there it is, boom, okay. So see, it actually took a while there, longer than you're used to with a vanilla Minecraft server. Once this is loaded up though, I actually want to go up here, right click on your desktop thing, this might be at the bottom, I actually forgot what this is called. That's a fail. But right click on it, click on Task Manager, and in here you should have Java TM Platform SE Binary somewhere. Because we launched the server like that to get everything downloaded, there's no way for us to close it out. We didn't open up CMD. So we want to go ahead, right click on this, and end that task just to close out of it and get it gone. Once you've done that, you can close out of Task Manager, and now we want to create what's called a run.bat command. To do that, right click down here in the white space. Create a new text document. You don't have to name it anything. Doesn't matter what you name it. Then open up your new text document. And then you want to go to the description of this video. Under all of the links, you'll see this. Now, if you're installing a different version of Bucket with this tutorial, it should work as long as you change this number right here from let's say 1.12. Let's say you're doing this with 1.13. Come back over here if this says 1.13.3, right? You want to come back over here and change that to 
that. But in this case, we're doing it with 1.12.2, and that is what will be in the description of this video. So if you're doing this for 1.12.2, change nothing, keep it as is. But come over here and copy it from the description, paste it into your new text document. Now you want to click File, Save As, and then you want to come and name this run.bat, R-U-N.bat, and don't click Save Yet. You then want to do Save Type As all files then click save now you can close out of this you can delete the new text document you created right just delete that and now you should have this run file it should have the little cogwheels over there double click on that and your server will now work and there we go the server now starts loading things after 15 seconds set game type is survival yada 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 it is now generating the spawn area of uh, the server and then eventually it'll say done right there which is really cool we can actually go ahead and stop this by typing in stop i just always like to run that to make sure uh, everything is good now we actually want to come up here to our windows button yours is probably in the bottom left go ahead and click on that and type in cmd just like that then you should see command prompt right click on this and run it as an administrator in the command prompt you want to type ip con fig ip config all one word, all lowercase, and hit enter. This will open up all sorts of stuff, but what we're interested in is our default gateway and IPv4 address. The first thing we're going to be dealing with is our IPv4 address. We want to then come over here, back to the bucket server folder we created, right, and then go into the server properties file, right? Right here it is. Double click on that and it should open in notepad. If it doesn't, just select notepad to open it. In here, you'll find a bunch of different settings you can change for your server, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in just this one line. Server dash IP. Here you want to type your IPv4 address. In my case, 192.168.1.181. Exactly like that. Click file save and close out of it there you go however we want to keep both the command prompt open and this bucket server file open because we'll be coming back to it now your server is pretty much set up at this point you could go join it by typing in your ipv4 address here but your friends cannot so let's make it to where your friends can join your server to do that go back to your web browser just create a new tab and then type in your default gateway right here in my case it's 192.168.1.1 yours might be exactly the same or completely different. Whatever it is, is perfectly fine. Go ahead and hit enter here and it should open up a page that looks exactly the same or completely different to this. Now, no matter what, it's probably going to be a login page. But as you can see, mine is nice and fancy and web-based and all that. Yours literally might just be a login box that pops down from the top of your browser. Whatever it is, that's perfectly fine as long as you have a login box. If it uh, logs you directly into your browser, your router, you're good to go. Now, what do you enter here? Well, luckily, you can go to the, I think, third link down below. Below. It's linked down below the breakdown.xyz slash router passwords to uh, come here and see an in-depth guide on how to find your router passwords. Go through each of these methods one by one and eventually you should get to the point to where you have it, even if it does mean contacting your ISP as a last resort. So uh, there you go. Go here, find this, try the default password on router passwords, try to check your router for a sticker, talk to the person who set up your internet. There's tons of options and this article will help you out. Once you've found that, you can come back over here, enter it, and then just sign on in. Once you're into your router, you want to look for port forwarding. For me, that is under security, and then it is under apps and gaming, and then it is under single port forwarding. For you, it might be under advanced. It might be under advanced advanced. It might be under advanced security. It might be under advanced apps and gaming. It might just be a tab at the top called apps and gaming. I've literally seen all of that depending on the router. So whatever router it is, you're looking for port forwarding. That's what you're looking for. And in my case, single port forwarding. If you have single port forwarding, that's correct. If you just have port forwarding, that's fine too. Whatever it says, it's correct as long as it says port forwarding. Once you find that, click add a new port forward and then you can name it whatever you want. In my case, I'm just going to name it Minecraft. For external port, you want it to be 25565. For internal port, you want it to be 2. 5565. Five. So whatever those say, both of these ports need to be 25565. Five, five. For protocol, you're going to want to do both or 
you could do TCP slash UDP, but either way, both of those protocols need to be selected. And then for device IP, this is going to be yet again your IPv4 address, which is right over here. In my case, 192.168.1.181. Yours is probably something completely different. You can then click save, confirm, apply, whatever your router has you do to confirm those changes. And the hard part is over, guys. We can now, well, how do I put this? get into our server. So to do that, it's pretty easy. Come back over here into your bucket server file. Click on run there and we can then launch up Minecraft. What's great about Bucket is you don't have to worry about any local things like you do with Forge. You can literally just play the latest release of Minecraft and join a Bucket server. Oh, how sweet it is. And once you launch into Minecraft here, I'm going to minimize it actually. This thing's huge. But once you launch into Minecraft, you'll be able to join your server in two ways. You'll be able to join it via both your IPv4 address that we keep coming back to, right? Right there. Or your public IP address. First, we'll just join it off of our local IPv4 address. Only you can join this way. Your friends cannot join off of your IPv4 address. And there you go. We're in the server. We can even see right over there, Nick's Games is now in the server, which is my gamer tag on uh, Minecraft. So there you guys have it, right? We're in the server. But it's cool. You're in your server, but there's really no point in having a server if your friends can't join it. So how can they join it? Well, we're going to go ahead, disconnect, and come over here to our browser. We want to open up a new tab, go to google.com, and then type in two letters. IP. Just like that. Hit enter and boom. And there's your public IP address. For you, on my screen, it's just a blur with some numbers at the end. But uh, that's because, again, you don't want to give this to everybody. You only want to give this to people you trust. Even some friends you might not trust enough to give this, especially if they're a little tech savvy. They might think, huh, it'd be funny to hit so-and-so offline with the DDoS. Right? You don't want to make this public and that's why mine is blurred. You can now come back to Minecraft, direct connect, to the public IP address, which again is blurred except for the last three digits. We can then join into the server. And if we open up our CMD yet again with our Minecraft server, we'll be able to see that we have joined. It really is that quick and easy, guys. Now, if your friends do have any issues joining off of your public IP address, that big long number we just found, send that to them. And if they have any issues joining off of that, you need to disable your firewalls. I don't show you how to do that because it's not safe. Um, it's basically the be all end all of that. I don't recommend disabling your firewalls, but most likely that is the issue. And I'm not just talking about the firewalls on your computer, like Windows Defender. You need to disable those, but I'm also talking about the firewalls on your um, router. So your router and networking devices have their own firewalls, you're going to want to disable those too, or at the very least, add an exception in for your Minecraft server. But again, I don't show people how to do that because it's not safe, and I would recommend just going and buying a server for $5 a month from anywhere over turning off your, your firewalls and opening up your security on a computer like that. But nevertheless, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome Minecraft content every single freaking Weak. It's awesome. Also, you need to install some plugins on this server. A bucket server is basically useless without plugins. And you can check your screen right now. There's a video up there on your screen that will show you how to do that, as well as the eye above my face that uh, will show you how to do that. Install plugins on your bucket server, which is uh, relatively important. But nevertheless, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content like this. I'm Nick. This has been the breakdown, and I'm out. Peace.